on the Thursday evening before his arrest and crucifixion, Jesus spends time with the disciples, his friends, in the upper room. This evening we spend time again on our own. But through our worship and our prayers we are, of course, together. Only Thursday is an evening packed with drama. The washing of the disciples' feet. The confrontation with Judas and Peter. The institution of the Lord's Supper and the giving of the new commandment to love one another. Normally worship on Maundy Thursday focuses on the Lord's Supper with its rich anticipation of the hope-filled coming of the kingdom. And some traditions practice the washing of feet as part of the celebration of Maundy Thursday. But we're going to focus on the garden, the Garden of Gethsemane, the place of earnest prayer and aloneness, a place of worship, a place of wonder, as we journey with Jesus towards the cross. Then, accompanied by the disciples, Jesus left the upstairs room and went as usual to the Mount of Olives. There he told them, Pray that you will not give into temptation. He walked away, about a stone's throw, and knelt down and prayed, Father, if you are willing, please take this cup of suffering away from me. Yet, I want your will to be done, not mine. Then an angel from heaven appeared and strengthened him. He prayed more fervently, and he was in such agony of spirit that the sweat fell to the ground like great drops of blood. At last he stood up again and returned to the disciples, only to find them asleep, exhausted from grief. Why are you sleeping? he asked them. Get up and pray so that you will not give into temptation. But even as Jesus said this, a crowd approached, led by Judas, one of the twelve disciples. Judas walked over to Jesus and to greet him with a kiss. But Jesus said, Judas, would you betray the Son of Man with a kiss? When the disciples saw what was about to happen, they exclaimed, Lord, should we fight? We brought the swords. And one of them struck at the high priest's slave, slashing off his right ear. But Jesus said, no more of this. And he touched the man's ear and healed him. Then Jesus spoke to the leading priests, the captains of the temple guard and the elders who had come for him. Am I some dangerous revolutionary, he asked, that you come with swords and clubs to arrest me? Why didn't you arrest me in the temple? I was there every day. But this is your moment, the time when the power of darkness reigns. Gethsemane, that beautiful garden, those scented flowers softly resting their heads in the balm of the evening, their tender fragrance gently rising, mingling with the incense of a bright moon. That band of brothers, those hungry ears, so wanting enlightenment, one more golden enrichment. Their sluggish humanity quietly luring them, infusing their better thoughts with the brief sweetness of sleep. That unadorned God-man, those pungent blood tears warmly wending their way down the cheeks of the Maker. Their bitter perfume slowly falling, mixing with the dirt of the night-moist earth. That kneeling true victor, those exhaled pleas in the moment of anguish heard by the Father. Their spasming challenge acknowledged, entwined with the salve of submission. That obedient master, those remarkable answers absorbed by his flesh surrendered to truth, their unbridled reality born blended passion and power on the way to the tree. There's so much happening on the day before Jesus was crucified. It's hard to focus and difficult to know on which part to rest our attention. I've settled this evening on the Garden of Gethsemane, where we see, like last night, 
the humanity of Jesus. Yesterday Jesus wept at the sorrow and sadness of the death of Lazarus, seeing what death does to people. This evening, again, Jesus suffers. Let this cup pass from me. Is there any other way? The plan that God, God's self, has set in motion at the beginning of time. The plan of love where God's self plays a central role in redeeming our broken world. It's about to be unravelled as Jesus expresses his frail humanity. Is there another way? There was no other good enough to pay the price of sin. Just hours before he was arrested and crucified, we see the humanity of Jesus rising again in suffering. You can see the wrestle, take this cup, may it pass. And yet each time he prays, let this cup pass, his faith in the eternal rescue plan rises once more. But not my will, yours be done. Can we learn how to suffer from this tormented soul? Can we learn that however our prayers go, whatever our hopes may be, however much we tell the Lord what should or shouldn't happen, can we wrap our prayer in the surrender of not my will, but yours be done? You'll see that Jesus suffers alone. Sure, the disciples are going through their own struggle and have their own questions and have their own ways of dealing with the stress of the night, including, of course, violence. But each time Jesus goes off to pray, he is alone. He goes deeper into the Garden of Gethsemane and prays on his own, for this is a path that only Jesus can tread. How often do we feel alone when we suffer? Others have their own struggles and have their own questions and have their own ways of dealing with the stress, including, of course, violence. But how often do we feel alone when we suffer? And yet in the moment of despair, at Jesus' lowest ebb, the Father sends an angel to strengthen him. An angel to strengthen him. He was never alone. His father was suffering too. The angels are suffering too. All of heaven is suffering too. So the garden teaches us that when we suffer, we never suffer alone. Our suffering joins with the suffering God, the Gethsemane Christ, the morning spirit. Gethsemane teaches us that our suffering finds its peace and its place in the goodness of God, the redeeming of all things and the mysterious purposes of God's perfect will. And at times like these, facing the daily updates of those no longer with us due to coronavirus, when faced with our own Gethsemane moments, it takes a courageous faith to believe that. But let's join in with the Gethsemane Jesus and pray not our will be done, but yours. As we pray, when I say, Gracious Saviour, be present in their need, we all respond by praying and lead them safely through. Gracious Saviour, be present in their need and, and lead, lead them, them safely, safely through. through. Lord Jesus Christ, who endured such anguish in Gethsemane, hear our prayer for those who, as was so with you, wrestle with what the future might bring. 
uncertain of their ability to meet it, nervous, troubled, afraid. Gracious Saviour, be present in their need and, and lead, lead them, them safely through. through. Lord Jesus Christ, falsely arrested, accused, in prison and condemned, we pray for those who, as was so with you, are denied their rights, wrongfully charged, cruelly treated or unfairly judged. Gracious Saviour, be present in their needs and, and lead them, them safely through. Lord Jesus Christ, flogged, humiliated, nailed to a cross, we pray for those who, as was so with you, are tortured, abused, victimised, despised. Gracious Saviour, be present in their need and, and lead, lead them, them safely through. Lord Jesus Christ, bearing our sins in awful isolation, we pray for those who, as was so with you, feel hopeless, abandoned, crushed, alone. Gracious Saviour, be present in their need and, and lead them, them safely through. Lord Jesus Christ, laid in the coldness of a tomb, we pray for those who, as was so with you, face death or who have passed from this life, their earthly journey near its close or at an end. Gracious Saviour, be present in their need and lead them safely through. Lord Jesus Christ, our Lord, we pray for ourselves and all people asking that as was, as was so with you, we may enter into the joy of your kingdom, the beauty of your presence, celebrating your new creation and rejoicing in your love forevermore. Gracious Saviour, be present in our need and, and lead, lead us, us safely, safely through. through. Amen. Amen. The peace of all peace be ours this night. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen.